Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, we continue talking about oscillations and uh, primarily mechanical oscillations right now. Um, now, before we were talking about basically um, some aspects of movement uh, itself as it oscillates. In particular, um, in a simple case uh, of a spring with uh, an object attached, we came with an uh, equation of displacement of the object uh, of some neutral position. So if this is the neutral position of the spring, then we basically if, uh, make some effort to move this particular object to this position, stretching basically from the neutral position by distance A and then let it go without any initial um, velocity. And then this would be um, an equation which describes the movement where x is displacement of the uh, neutral point. So, now we will talk about a different aspect of these movements. Um, we will talk about energy. So this lecture is about energy of oscillation. Um, now this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens. It's presented on unisor.com and I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website rather than from let's say YouTube where you might have found it using some kind of a search engine because the website contains the whole course which means there is a menu uh, of uh, all lectures and lectures are logically dependent one from another like for instance today's lecture depends on two previous lectures where I was actually deriving this formula um, plus there is a very detailed uh, notes for each lecture it's basically like a textbook um, also physics for teens is a course which has a prerequisite and prerequisite is called math for teens now you will see in this particular lecture for instance um, that you do need math. You need calculus, you need vector algebra, you need a lot of math. Physics cannot be studied without knowing math. So today, for instance, I'll use integral. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, the site is completely free. I mean, there are no advertisements, there are no strings attached. You don't even have to sign in unless you are performing some kind of a supervised studying but anything is completely free okay so let's talk about energy when I initially stretched my spring by this distance a what basically does it mean from the energy standpoint well I perform some work now where is it going I perform the work, which means it's supposed to be converted into some energy of the spring. So in this position, in a stretched position to its maximum, um, a, a, a spring is supposed to have certain potential energy. We know that mechanical energy, energy can be um, basically characterized as kinetic energy, it's energy of movement. Remember? E kinetic is equal to m v squared over 2, where m is a mass and v is a speed. So this is the energy. Uh, it's a kinetic energy. Now, potential energy is a completely different thing. Potential energy is basically ability to perform some work. Now, what kind of work stretched spring actually can perform? Well, if you put some kind of a weight or whatever else to this particular point, it will push it, which means it will exert certain force on the object. Uh, object will be accelerated and it will be moving back to the um, neutral position. 
Now I'm assuming that there are no friction, no air, no gravity, just pure spring, ideal spring, weightless, which has only elasticity in it. Okay, so we do have certain potential energy because we have performed work to stretch the spring. Since we perform the work, amount of work we have performed actually is exactly equal to amount of potential energy because you know about energy conservation law. If some work some work is actually spent, mechanical work I'm talking about, then some energy, mechanical energy is supposed to be transferred to someone else or something else. Either we are moving something or we are stretching the spring. So in this case at the very um, uh, maximum stretch by the uh, by the distance a, um, my spring is supposed to have certain potential energy, which is equal to amount of work which I perform. Okay, so what happens next if I just let it go without any initial speed? Well, the spring, which contains certain stretched spring which contains certain energy, is supposed to pull the object back here. Well, from the position where the initial speed is equal to zero, it starts moving, which means it accelerates with certain force, and the force actually depends on how uh, stretched the spring is. You know the Hooke's law. The Hooke's law is... that the force is equal to minus kx, where x is the stretched distance, or squeezed actually, it's the same thing, whether it's squeezing or stretching. The force is always opposite. If x is positive from here, well, I assume this is neutral position. This is x is equal to zero. So whenever x is positive, uh, the force is negative it goes back. And if x is negative, then the force will be positive. So it's the Hooke's law, which basically we are considering reflects more or less um, how uh, the spring behaves. So there is, a, there is a Hooke's law, so there is always a, f a force which drives this particular object back to the uh, original neutral position. Now the force is always acting while it's moving from here to here, which means the object is, is accelerating and accelerating. And what happens when it reaches the neutral position? Well, let's talk about this. Potential energy when the spring is in a neutral position should be equal uh, to zero, because spring from the neutral position cannot by itself move left or right, stretching or, or, or squeezing, right? But we do have this object, and it reached certain uh, speed. It has certain mass. So at this particular point, all the energy, all the potential energy, which used to be when the object was in this position, will be converted to kinetic energy at this particular moment. What happens next? Well, there is an inertia and the object will, will start moving further, squeezing the spring. What happens in this case? Well, the spring will slow it down, right? Because the force is always acting opposite to direction. If x is negative, then the force will be positive, so the force will prevent movement. What does it mean if it's already moving with certain speed? Well, it will slow it down up to a zero point, of speed zero. When speed is equal to zero, it means that the spring is squeezed to uh, the position where its potential energy should be equal to the same kinetic energy at this point or potential energy at this point. So energy which we have supplied to a spring, stretching it, is converted into potential energy in this. Then the potential energy is diminishing but the kinetic energy speed of the, uh, of the object is increasing. By this point, uh, all energy is kinetic, potential is zero. Then the kinetic energy starts diminishing because 
the speed is diminishing, but potential is increasing. But the sum, potential and kinetic energy, at any time, because of energy conservation law, must be exactly the same, constant, and equal to the initial amount of energy at uh, stretch by the distance A. And that's the most important part about how the energy is um, converting. My work, when I stretch, is converted into potential, then potential is uh, decreasing, kinetic is increasing. Some of them is constant. And at this point, everything is kinetic because potential is zero. And it, uh, then the potential is increasing, kinetic decreasing, up until the maximum squeezed point. And then the potential energy at this particular point is equal to potential energy at this point. And then it goes back. So as soon as the spring is completely um, squeezed to the point where potential energy is equal to the initial, then it will start stre stre straightening again, back to uh, stretching again, back to neutral, and through the neutral, back to this an initial and uh, stretched position. Because again, energy is um, uh, preserved, the constant. And that's how it will move back and forth, back and forth, according to this law, where x is a displacement of the uh, neutral position. Great, this is preamble. Now let's talk about mass. First of all, what kind of potential energy I will have at this particular point, because everything depends on it. Because now, from this point, we can calculate all other things, kinetic energy at this point or at any other point. So we do need initial amount of energy at this point. How can we calculate it? Well, here comes the mass. Uh, let's consider that we have already stretched the object to this position x. And now we are trying to move it by infinitesimal uh, dx into position x plus dx. It's infinitesimal. dx is differential of uh, the distance, and it's uh, infinitesimal, which means from x to x plus dx, we can assume that the force is not really changing. The force we have to apply to stretch this um, spring. And the force depends on the x. So the force at point x is equal to this one. Right? So, what we have to do right now is we have to uh, add the force which I have spent from x to dx to another force which I spent from x plus dx to x plus d to dx, etc. So, we are dividing our interval from 0 to a into an uh, infinite number of infinitesimal small dx enters. Uh, 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 in intervals. On each one, we spend certain amount of work. It's differential of work, which is equal to f of x, which is this, times dx. Right? Work is equal to force times distance. And we are assuming that from x to pl uh, x plus dx, the force is constant and it's equal to f at x, distance is dx, so this is differential of work. What do we have to do now? We have to integrate it from zero, from 0 to a, which is equal to integral from 0 to a um, minus kx dx Well, minus actually doesn't really make sense because um, it doesn't matter which direction force actually is, um, is, is going as a vector. In this particular case, we are interested in um, uh, absolute value of this force because actually this is a vector equation. But now let's forget about the vectors because x is uh, directed um, the same uh, uh, along the same line as the force F, so they're collinear. So let's forget about 
this uh, uh, sign, and the integral of this would be k x squared divided by 2 using formula of Newton Leibniz. We have to uh, substitute instead of x. Now, I uh, draw this because the uh, derivative from x squared is 2x, since divided by 2 will be x, and k is just a linear multiplier. And that's equal to k a squared divided by 2. So, what we know is that at point a, my potential energy, u of a, is equal to k a squared over 2. This is energy at this particular point of stretching. So, now let's talk about how the object moves. It moves from this point to this point, and then to squeezing the spring to this point. So that's how this potential energy is converted into this kinetic energy at this point, because at neutral point, our energy is potential energy is equal to zero, so everything is kinetic. So if everything is kinetic, then uh, V of zero well, I will use V0. This is a speed at moment uh, of uh, crossing the neutral point. So, if this is V0, then M V0 square over 2, which is kinetic energy, <coughs> should be equal to maximum potential energy. From this, V0 is equal to uh, square root of k over m a. Well, let's put absolute value. So, the absolute value because when it moves here, the vector of speed is going this way. When it moves here, vector of speed going that way. But the absolute value of uh, speed, which we are talking about right now, is this. By the way, if you remember, square root of k over m is omega here. That was in one of the previous lectures, okay? All right, um, so this is what angular frequency or something like this is called. Um, okay, so we have found the maximum speed. Now, why is it maximum? Because all the potential energy converted into um, kinetic. Then the speed is reduced by the resistance of the spring, right? And it goes uh, from this value, from maximum value, to zero at point of maximum squeeze. And all potential energy becomes again this one, where A is initial stretch. Okay. Now, let's talk about not just this moment when it crosses the uh, neutral position, but at any distance. Let's say I'm, I'm interested at distance x is equal to d. What is potential energy and what is kinetic energy? Well, potential energy we know would be u of d exactly the same way as I calculated potential energy at point uh, x is equal to a, I can put uh, exactly the same calculation, it's just integral will be instead of 0 to a, it will be 0 to d, which means it would be k d squared over 2. So this is potential energy at any point d. Now, vd would be speed. So mvd square over 2 would be kinetic energy plus u of d should be equal to full energy of the system, right? u of a. Because all this energy, when we are somewhere in the middle here, is partially converted to kinetic energy, and whatever is left is potential energy. So this is a general for any d, right? Now, from which we, wrote, we, we, we can find out the speed 
at this particular moment when we are at this particular position where our object is at position uh, D of the neutral point, right? So what is this? M V D square over 2 is equal to U of A which is K A square minus minus U D K D square over 2 from which V D absolute value is equal to K over M square root and then square root of A square minus D square right? So this is speed of the object at any position which is at the distance d from the neutral point. So speed actually depends on the position, right? If d is equal to a, the maximum stretch, we will have zero here. Well, obviously, because we are saying that we just let it go without any initial speed after we stretched it. If d is equal to zero, we will have the same formula as before. v0 would be square root of k over m, and then square root of a square, which is a, right? That's what we have uh, just derived before. And if d is equal to minus a, it would be, once more, it would be zero. So it goes to the minus a uh, position when you're squeezing uh, uh, the spring when the spring is actually squeezed by the object which by inertia continue moving here and spends its kinetic energy to convert into potential energy of the, of the spring and uh, just as an interesting curiosity what if you will um, graph uh, the speed as it depends on the distance of the uh, neutral position. What kind of graph this function is? Well, let's call it y is equal to some kind of a coefficient, let's say alpha square root of a square minus x square. I'm using x and y because it's more kind of typical for functions, right? Basically it's v as instead of y and x instead of d. Now what is this? Well, y square is equal to alpha square times um, a square minus x square, right? <coughs> what is this? This is basically um, uh, some kind of a, um, a circle depending on alpha. If alpha is equal to 1, let's say it's a pure circle because y square is equal to a square minus x square and this is the circle because x square plus y square is equal to a square which is x square plus y square that's the hypotenuse and that's the distance from the zero so it describes a circle well in this particular case maybe only a quarter of a circle because we're talking about the positive as x is mm, uh, changing from 0 to a. But then if it's from minus a to 0, it would be another quarter of a circle, etc. So basically it's a circle. If we, ha <coughs> if we have uh, some kind of an alpha, it would be squeezed. Uh, the, the scale of the y would be different because it would be y over alpha square plus x square is equal to a square. <coughs> so it's basically uh, a circle squeezed by some kind of a coefficient alpha. But in any case, it's just some kind of a interesting detail of what exactly this dependency represents. And in, in this case, for instance, at uh, this is the beginning point where x is equal to a, right? d is equal to a, this is d. Um, and the speed is equal to, this is speed, v. So in this particular case we have uh, speed is equal to zero, but the distance is um, a. As the distance diminishing, speed is increasing. Then again, when the speed is, has reached its maximum at point of, 
um, distance equal to zero at this point. Then if uh, object goes further to the left, squeezing, then the speed is diminishing, but the potential uh, energy would be increasing because the distance uh, of the center of the neutral point would be um, increasing to the negative side by absolute value. All right, so basically that's it. That's how energy is um, supplied and then uh, transformed from potential to kinetic and then from kinetic to potential and then back and the circle is repeating again and again and again and that's how the equation in this particular case uh, uh, describes the movement and uh, this thing, or this thing rather, describes the speed at any point uh, where object is located uh, from minus a to plus a on the spring uh, of the central point, or of the neutral point. That's it. So thank you very much. I recommend you to read the notes for this lecture. It's basically the same thing, but just expressed as a textbook, and it 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 better lies in your in your mind actually after you read it with your own eyes. So we have like two different avenues: your visual and uh, audio uh, as as you're watching the video, and then you will have some kind of a textual uh, impression of the same thing. All right, that's it. Thanks and uh, good luck.